So without further ado, let's welcome Derek Williamson. Yes, hi, hello, good afternoon, hello. Derek. Selamat siang. Selamat siang. This is a uh, live from Bangkok, Thailand. Right. Thank you. Thank you so okay. much. I, really I hope the sound. It. You can hear me well. It's only six thousand kilometers. So she... <laughs> <laughs> I just I just came from Bangkok uh, just before the pandemic. Uh -huh. right, so uh -huh. yeah, I was lucky to to be able to. I, th I think we spent like almost two weeks there in in Bangkok. Um, so yeah, we had so much fun. But anyway, we. So, sorry, if, if I knew you were in Bangkok, then probably I will visit you. <laughs> sure, sure. Okay, so again, uh, thank you so much, Derek, for uh, being able to be here, sharing your insights and experience to all of us. And let's just begin. You have 35 minutes to present, okay. and then it will be followed up by Q&A for 15 minutes. So, Derek, the stage is yours. Thank you. Um, hello to all my old friends and colleagues in Indonesia. Um, I'm live from Bangkok, so if you want to chat, uh, you can go straight to the right-hand side and type something quickly. I will try to uh, to reply to your questions, uh, or maybe later. Eh? I, first, I would like to thank uh, CIAS, Pa Indrawan Bro, eh? and Pa Wayu Susedio, who uh, invite me to this uh, to speak on my most favorite topic, which is innovations. Let me fire up my our points, and then we can go from there. Eh? I have to say the time is also right, you know, knowing where we are now on the pandemic. Here we start seeing the news about the economic impact. Uh, we, see, we are hearing the news about the vaccine. So it's much clearer now than uh, five months ago. Okay. Okay, we can see your screen share, but somehow we cannot hear you, uh, Derek. Uh, maybe you accidentally push the mic button. Okay. Yes, we can hear you well now. Thank you. Oh, okay. Yes. I didn't do anything, actually, but <laughs> okay. good news. Right. Okay, we okay. can also see your slide. Great. That's another good news. Thank you, Pa uh, Indrawan. Thank okay. you. Um, Innovation journey, okay. Innovation journey, um, I think it's a brief topic for uh, leaders, for leaders and organization to to take on, to engage. Uh, the reason being that, uh, you know, at best, at the very best, you will have less percent, less than 10 percentage of uh, positive result. Okay? That's why I think it's a scary, scariest topic for top leader to take on this kind of journey. And I have seen it time and times again during my past 30 years. Uh, uh, we want to go on with the inno innovation journey and then we pause and then sometimes we stop. And then after a, a couple more years, we restart that again. Huh? Um, but today, okay, today I promise you, eh, I will not be throwing books at you eh, because uh, we're gonna come up with Two real life example, uh, like uh, uh, Indrawan was uh, talking about. Every two real case uh, from myself, uh, from Indonesia. Okay, you you guys probably have a better chance of enjoying these two innovation uh, than me. Okay? So, uh, but being an online session, I I think I couldn't move around as much as I would like to do. Okay. Uh, I suggest we try. Uh, we try to be interact as interactive as possible. Okay, uh, you can type anything on your on the right hand side and in your comment box. Let's mess it up. Uh, let's mess up the comment box a little. Okay, and your comment can be used uh, during the discussions and or after this discussion. Discussion. Our moderator probably can gather information quicker uh, while I'm speaking. Okay, so so. Do not be pressured into uh, answering any questions. Okay, you can even light a cigarette. I wouldn't know. Eh? So let's let's do that. So I it's just to give you a just a warm up uh, questions. I just 
maybe you can help me. Yeah? Just name the first, give me the first name that comes to your mind when you think of the invention of electric car. The first name that comes into your mind uh, when you think of the invention of elect an electric car, okay? Just type something, right? So we, we can do a calibration so we know that you are listening and you can hear what I'm saying, okay? Is it happening? Okay. Um, okay, we are starting off with now, right? I, I will keep the question flowing and with no pressure whatsoever. Okay, you uh, please uh, interact with me along the way. Okay. So here we go. My career started in the manufacturing in Australia about 30 years ago. I spent 25, my last 25 years, uh, including beautiful 12 years in Duabilas Tahun uh, in Indonesia from 2006 to 2017. And then uh, I ended my uh, work life here in uh, Thailand as a vice president of the retail and commercial. Okay, uh, A week or so I will be in Australia, straight to the quarantine, uh, back to Australia with my family. Uh, innovations um, has been a dominant part of my career. Um, back in the 1990s, we don't call it innovation. So we just call it R&D, research and development. So we do a lot of R&D back then. And, and today I learned that it's called innovations. Yeah? Uh, a lot of people seem to have it in their title nowadays, and, and it's fine. Okay, No often, but I, last week I just met someone with the title uh, tax innovator, huh? and then that's scamming. Huh? It just, just blew my mind huh? to have a tax innovation uh, exist in today's world. Okay. Um, we we created Speedcrete around uh, the year 2009, right? and at uh, while I was at PT, PT Housing, okay? and we created uh, uh, Ruma, seven days, a house that can be built in seven days. Uh, while I was with um, Siam City Cement Group, uh, a group company, in 2016. Um, the first one was uh, aiming at building a concrete road and open traffic in seven hours. Okay. And yes, you, you heard it right, seven hours. Uh, uh, normal construction would take weeks, and we we, we said we're going to do it in seven hours. And uh, second innovation was to build uh, uh, earthquake earthquake resistant house within seven days. Okay, so I've got stuck with this uh, uh, number seven phenomena. And I'm going to find something to do in seven minutes. So I hope uh, today's sharing will be worth your your time, okay? I'll be doing a bit of a storytelling so you can sense uh, what went on during such time. Uh, I was there all along, so if you have uh, any difficult questions, uh, I'm pretty sure I don't need to find any uh, books to uh, look for answer for you. <laughs> yes, so uh, Derek, uh, there are also some responses on the chat box. Yes. Can you see, can you see that? Uh, I cannot. You can read it. I, I will help you. Okay. So uh, it, it's from Edu Enriadis, Elon Musk, Zulkanain Johan, Tesla, Hasan Taufik, uh -huh. Tesla, Setiaji Kunto Wibisono, Tesla, Wisnu Herlambang, Tesla. <laughs> Tesla and Elon Musk. Okay. Uh, I, I suspect uh, that will be the, the answer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I will use that in my third page uh, from now. That's very good. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Pat. Okay. Okay. Just to make sure, uh, uh, Derek, on the chat box, there are menu bar on the top, event, stage, backstage, and direct messages. Perhaps you want to click stage so that you can see all the chats on stage. Okay. I'm maybe, under, maybe, but I'm, maybe, I think this is sound good if you are part, 
you can interact. That's excellent. Okay, I, I can help read the uh, comments and okay. answers. Yep. Beautiful. Okay. I don't want to touch anything right now because uh, this is uh, in cross country things. I don't want to <laughs> yes. mess up your, your sure. program. Sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hope yeah. you understand. Sure, please continue. You, okay, uh, I hope you guys can see the elephant. Okay, I use elephant as a metaphor. Right? So we're not we're not talking about elephant or anything. It's a metaphor. Right? Uh, I think it represents the large traditional organization pretty well. Okay, I think none of us, uh, you, me, none of us are zoologists, eh, but uh, if you look at the picture uh, together here. Um, we probably agree that this animal won't be climbing trees anytime soon. Eh? So we can, I hope we can agree with, with my note here. Because if you disagree with, uh, with this, uh, this session is off. Okay. I mean, just uh, looking at him. Okay. Uh, you can see, you can see there's many departments uh, in this elephant. So there's a huge gut or stomach in the middle right? and they're just full of specialists right? the, the large organization we have a lot of people with titles specialists specialists this specialist right? each of each of them have a um, almost entire purpose right? Right. is to ensure that things remain steady as you go right? it's a large beast right? and uh, it's around this around the stomach area okay uh, if you look on uh, the task, okay, you see the selfie stick holder, okay. Uh, we call it the PR or com communication department, and uh, finance and sales force are the legs, okay? are the legs of the elephants, and they all have their own purpose. They are large. Uh, communication may not be as good uh, between the brain and the tail. And uh, one have to wonder about the flap, flapping ears. Eh? What what are they supposed to be for? And they are, they can't do anything for the tails or the uh, the backside. And so, if anyone can uh, comment on the flapping ears, uh, would it be a secretary of the board of director? Maybe that would be it. Okay, the brain. The brain is quite thick, eh, small, eh? and it's not small. What I mean, the brain is not small, but they're very, very well guarded. And you get into the brain; it's not that, it's not that simple. And um, elephant, eh? it's a big animal. Let me tell you that it's a, it's very hard for elephant to pick, pick himself up eh? each time he falls. Eh? So it's not easy. Eh? Over the year, corporate big company eh? they learn not to make mistakes they do not they do not make silly mistakes very hard for them to pick themselves up okay that built into a uh, automatically built into their culture you have six sigma eh? six sigma eh? you don't make mistakes with six sigma Toyota away um you don't accept mistake eh? we can make mistake once and the second time you out the door so the, it, it turned into the, that kind of culture. On top of that, you have safety culture where you are being told that uh, do not try anything new. Okay. Actually, there's one of the oil and gas company that I, I used to in, engage with. The, they have a big sign in front that uh, don't try anything new. Right? Um, just stay safe and go home today. Yeah? And that built into the uh, corporate culture. Right? And then... Uh, you have to note that uh, when you talk about innovations, uh, very hard for them to um, accept uh, that uh, we, they're going to take a journey that will have six num uh, six is what uh, six percentage of success uh, rate at the end. Yeah? Uh, so that is, is something that they uh, they have to swallow. That is very difficult for for elephant to do. Eh? But these features uh, are not their weaknesses. Eh? Let, let me note, eh? uh, when coming coming to adopting innovations, they just cannot accept the that kind of percentage of success. Eh? So all this time, little creatures, fast moving creatures, aka small players can coexist when, uh, with a large animal like that. Eh? 
we can see small and fast uh, with this pandemic, with the COVID-19, we can see small and fast in, uh, enterprises make real impact in the ecosystem for the big boys, eh? like never before. Food becomes gas for them, okay? And they are now looking up to the trees to find more food. In this case, we are we're getting closer to what I'm trying to get at the uh, innovation part. Um, but then, they have, don't forget they have a big shoulders. Huh? They can uh, large enough to uh, to house Becky. I hope you can see Becky in my picture. Huh? Becky is on the back of the elephant. Okay, we use we will be using Becky to represent uh, what's important today, huh? which is how to build uh, innovation subculture. Uh, within a large organization, and that is Becky to me. Huh? So, enough for the metaphor. Okay. Any question at this point? I don't. I hope not. Okay. Innovative culture. Uh, today we'll be talking about two uh, examples. Okay, and hopefully we can discuss about what happened after the COVID nineteen. So I have a question for you. Huh? Uh, think about the. Uh, um, let's go back to to your my first questions. Huh? If the name of uh, Robert Anderson didn't uh, pop up uh, just now, uh, I heard uh, Elon Musk and then Elon Musk and then Elon Musk, right? Just Elon Musk. Uh, what about Rob Anderson? Rob, Rob Anderson uh, invented an uh, electric car a long time ago, right? and his name is not even mentioned today. And if you answer yes, uh, it's good. Okay? If you do answer no, it will help me with my next presentation. So it's good that you didn't answer um, Rob Anderson, okay. The next question for you is, uh, let's think about three components of innovation that first come to your mind, okay? There's no wrong answer. It could be chantic, yeah? beautiful, okay? And if you can think of something, just start typing it down and then uh, we we get to my next point here, okay? All right? So I'm going to tell you a story here. Uh, the picture you see right now in front of you is uh, my sales opening pitch before 2012, uh, 2012. And this is uh, not far away from my old office. And I start uh, when I go to see a customer or meet with a high level government uh, official, I will start with this picture, imagine a road which could be built in seven hours. Yeah. Um, the year was 2012 and I received a phone call okay, to rush to rush back to my office in the evening. I arrived there, there's about five government officials They're waiting to know more about Speakry. Yeah. Uh, they asked questions such as, uh, are you ready to start tonight? Um, we need to know more. Can you teach us uh, how to how to uh, monitor your projects? Eh? Which is weird. Eh? Uh, at that time, the capital roads. I mean, we're talking about the capital city of Jakarta. Was pretty much clogged with heavy traffic. The worst you can think of. Eh? I mean, I'm not sure about it now, but uh, back then it was pretty bad, very bad. And then the senior government official. High up in the government was determined to ease the traffic jam. Okay. Um, something that looks like this, probably not uncommon today, but uh, in two th I'm not sure. So I haven't been back for for years. So, but uh, back in 2012, this is pretty much the picture, the scene the, the, from the north of Jakarta, emerging potholes on the roads. Everywhere, right? uh, Jakarta was flooded in the north, uh, and you could read from the daily newspaper. Uh, people die. You know, there's fatality, daily fatality in the north. Uh, Jalan Semper, I think. I think it's Jalan Semper. People die every day. Um, the busway was um, badly need repair. It's uh, being torn apart. Uh, causing. Uh, we talk about. Uh, Busway eh, in the middle of the road, eh? um, causing buses to detour and and uh, add to the traffic chain. Eh? 
and uh, most of the existing technology in repair in Indonesia were slow and ineffective. Okay. So I hope you can see the picture. And uh, on top of that, it seemed that uh, the, the one bus at a month took turn to be caught on fire. Okay, I don't know why, right? but one bus a month on fire. So it was an interesting time right? to understand. So um, I see, you can see the before and after. And how long you think you're going to, how long do you think uh, anyone would repair the picture on the left? Right? And if I say seven hours, uh, do you believe it? <laughs> Back then, you know, the the then vice governor, uh, they, I'm not going to name names, uh, heard about a new road construction technique that we uh, developed in Indonesia. Um, and he wanted to endorse it for the capital city. At that time, I was on, uh, me and my team, we were on the third years. Um, we were on the third years of the development of speed feed, uh, because we started in 2009. Okay. Um, we, we already perfected uh, our construction technique. And <clears throat> we have done all the work in the international port of Jakarta and many fuel profile projects. And we, we have made our first million dollar at that point. Uh, I think the signage on the top right is something that we are most proud of. Right? Uh, we uh, we start launching the seven hours to jump at our gratis seven hours or free. Okay, or we don't charge anything, uh, and that uh, I think it took off pretty well. Uh, a lot of people come and took selfie with this sign, uh, including uh, myself. Um. And when your competency is high, you know, you uh, at that point we can we can plug the hole at Jalan Semper. I think we've done 100 potholes in one night. That, that kind of thing. Eh? And um, we are we are starting to explore building the whole new roads. Eh? Uh, we start uh, building roads in the. You know, you're talking about 100 meters of roads uh, in seven hours. Uh, repair bridges uh, and. Uh, the, the, my team uh, with um, at, at that time, going back five years ago, never built anything in their life, eh? starting to win every project they need that need to be done in a rapid time. They're starting to win every project that we, we see. Eh? Um, then the, the case study went on because eh? we went triple digit growth. Uh, we make the first, for the, our $3 million investment. We uh, we made forty million dollar in two years. That kind of that that kind of amazing numbers yeah, that uh, we were very proud of. Yeah. The I think the period kept off with um, the, when Saint Gallen University put that into their case study. Uh, even last month, I still getting consulted by students from Switzerland, and they're still talking about what was has been going on in Indonesia on this project. And so that was something that uh, never thought of. Right? Um, a couple of weeks ago before, because I when I, I accepted the invitation for this uh, to, to speak here, I, because the business, uh, the whole scene was taken over by new owners, eh, uh, which is uh, part of uh, Simen Indonesia Group. Eh. So as a courtesy, I, I contacted uh, their CEO uh, to uh, of PT Solusi Bangun Indonesia to comment on where they are the past five years. Eh. So just to ensure that uh, you guys get to see that it's still going well. Eh. So uh, this is, uh, I just plucked the note from um, that they sent to me as uh, the update. Uh, thank you very much, Paul Pak Juhan Siantan. Uh, Juhan is the uh, CEO of uh, Solusi Bangun Beton and Pak Olia Omar, CEO of PT Solusi Bangun Indonesia. Uh, thank you very much for their kind update. 
Um, you, know, you see the crazy ideas uh, start off uh, small uh, in the in the large elephant can grow into a, I think counting the numbers uh, over 110 million 110 million US dollar in revenue. So that is something is not a unicorn. Of course, it's not a unicorn. But consider it's only one country, and there's a still a way to go. So with this story, I hope you can sense uh, the energy, uh, the risk that we took, the pain, the teamwork. Uh, there's a team of three or four at the beginning, uh, one drop off along the way. Uh, three years is a long time in, in one's career. And uh, when we reached the first million, uh, we thought that it might not see the next five millions, but we end up uh, with 110 million, 110 million dollar revenue today. Yeah? And uh, the lesson learned, uh, this is uh, just about done for the first example. Uh, I think the management is to the key points. Yeah? Um, key points are, um, I think the branding is important. Uh, the, the, uh, I would say that if you never thought about Rob Anderson, Robert Anderson, who invented um, electric car, but I, I guess that you were going to say something about Elon Musk, okay? So a branded solution should be something you want to think about. Uh, if you are starting your innovation journey, uh, I make it a point uh, in the past uh, 10 years that uh, when I start a project, I find a good name for you for my projects and I would I will, I will get the trademark protected from the beginning. Yeah? So we have done uh, uh, speed creed, true creed, whatever creed that I think can think of, I will sign them all up. Yeah? So I think we need to own the trademarks. Yeah? Or else you end up with like uh, Rob Anderson and then, uh, you know, Elon, Elon Musk didn't do anything. They just make it famous. Yeah? But also the timing is important. Yeah? Secondly, depend on how radical. I think the speed grid is radical uh, because it's never been done before in in the industry here and not in the country, not in the province. It's never been done before in Indonesia. Uh, how far away your project drifting away from your existing core business. I think that 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 distance is important. Eh? Uh, building department inside the traditional organization will be you will have a culture challenges okay if you ask your elephant to grow a wing okay uh the poor dumbo will spend his time with that kind of weight trying to fly right and try to go up uh the the, the trees to pick fruits yeah? uh so i think uh, uh we grow a becky yeah? uh, that's what we did with uh speed tree uh, if, if you remember becky the the bird, right? Uh, that's what we did. Uh, we grow a small and cute uh, organization just outside, not uh, far in, far enough from the elephant to move around and move up the tree, pick fruits sometime, okay? But small enough to rest on the back of the dumbo, uh, the, the elephant. I, I use a lot of metaphor nowadays, so I don't know why. Uh, at the same time, far enough not to be impacted by the elephant's activity, because yeah, elephant activity is very serious. Uh, no matter how big you are, as a Becky the bird, the elephant activity is more important. Eh? But close enough to share positive results. Uh, I think that that is uh, my learning. Uh, that uh, sometime uh, Becky the bird is uh, what a large organization should be thinking thinking about eh, when coming to embarking to, on innovations, eh, the brand solution works, okay? Um, when I talk about drifting away from the core business, I think this is the chart that I, my thinking charts, eh, so I just draw something up just to show you that uh, uh, when you are doing uh, incremental improvements, eh, um, you're talking about something that new to your team. Look on the bottom left, you see that something new to your team, okay? And uh, maybe new uh, to the industry, I still think it's quite low when compared to new to the world on the, on the, uh, at the top, right? And uh, new to the countries, uh, at, as the newness, I call, let's, let's call it newness, uh, in, increase, uh, the existing organization tend to struggle 
okay, to service the, the newness. Yeah? Um, so we're talking about, uh, when you're talking about something that's new to your team, uh, maybe project team will be fine. And then you start thinking about departure from the core team. Uh, and when you are, your newness move to uh, new to the world or new to the country, you start thinking about new top team. In the case of Speedcrete, we did that straight away. The Speedcrete was placed in a new business, entirely new business entity from existing core business. Uh, there's a lot of things, good things come out of that and uh, a few challenges as well. Okay. But uh, that's what we did uh, with Speedcrete. Uh, we, we depart from the existing uh, core business. Um, So you just heard about that. Yeah? So that's a case of uh, Becky. Uh, in in our case in Speedcrete, uh, Becky starting to sing songs and the elephant dance along. Uh, that that is a I that is a success case. Yeah? Uh, and in but in most cases, uh, as shown in my slide here, uh, Becky sing and elephant do not even bother to look eh? so in many cases uh we've according to accenture survey um most business will try to use the existing process eh, to manage the uh, innovation projects and most of them found i think nine ninety four percent uh deemed to be failed eh? and so that is uh, something that i that will link to my second uh, innovations that I want to talk about. Okay, uh, so try to fit the innovation project around existing process, uh, likely to end up with negative outcome. Okay, so that will be uh, what we're going to talk about. Uh, just information, Derek. We have five minutes. Uh for the presentation oh. slide, yes. Yeah, okay, I will rush, okay. I was using the U building uh, theory U to explain what's going on in the next project, but I'm gonna rush to that. Basically, the, we are looking at uh, how to flatten the, the curve, uh, how to make, uh, because three years is too long. So uh, I was uh, using theory U to regionalize future, eh, back to where you want to be and uh, eliminate a lot of voice uh, that coming from the organizations. You get a voice of judgment, voice of cynicism, and voice of fear. In this case, if you look at the bottom, you see that uh, uh, I uh, adopt uh, something I call ECPC, uh, Empathy, Select, Explore, Prototype. And uh, we treat, we use the different medicine for each kind of voice in the organization. You want to uh, tackle the te technical challenges of how to do prototype. We put a lot of work into our prototyping, okay? And at the end, it, uh, we were able to, I'm gonna show you what we achieved uh, at the end. Uh, in the first prototype was ready to be built in uh, about two months when the pro after the project kickoff, uh, it failed, okay? And the second one ended up with, uh, the right result that we want to see. Yeah? It seems that I cannot hear the sound from the video. It's okay. I think the, the sound is not important. Okay. So can you tell me the what's what's in the video? So sort of like, so we know what we are looking at now. Um, this is a prototype of how we build, end up building a house in uh, seven days. Wow, okay. Okay. And uh, that after the second prototype mm -hmm. uh, was in 2017. Mm -hmm. um, in 2018, we end up with 100 house built in Indonesia. 
and uh, 2019, 1,000 houses was built. That was uh, following the tsunami or earthquake in Palau, Palu, Palu, Palu. Yes. The uh, the president was there, and uh, which is a good news for the president. But it's early to call. The success uh, because we didn't do anything with the culture of the the, the business. And in this case, Becky is in Indonesia, and Dumbo is still in Thailand. So uh, they still have uh, they have to still have to work on the, the culture. So I do not want to call it success at this point. Okay. So I come to the second last uh, point here. Okay. Um, Post COVID nineteen. Uh, negative impact it's different people are talking about it's going to be uh, the world's going to collapse but it's not uh, because uh, one industry to another we uh, we're talking about uh, many large organizations remain on the same path okay uh, that they used to be pre covid one thing i can see is uh Customer behavior change, okay? Uh, it's only support the growth in small to medium enterprise. Um, this is a signal that uh, some kind of slow death for large organization or uh, they will have to do something about it. Uh, brand value has been deteriorated uh, quite a lot in the past months. The customer, customer do not value the same uh, Card that we use pre COVID 19. Uh, for example, if you used to deliver your product in three days pre COVID and you used to get five stars in your scoring, you probably get one if you, if you deliver that late. I would say for the large elephant, innovation should be built and it can be bought. Um, mm. you see that more ready-made innovations will be purchased rather than uh, in-house building. Uh, in-house build take a long time. My final note, uh, I think, uh, I think I, I'm okay with time. To succeed in post-COVID, you have to be good in three things. And uh, when I say three, I mean uh, three group of people in your organization. The team have to be good at coming up with mm -hmm. You as a leader uh, have to be good at selecting ideas. Okay. Your top leadership team, the very top one, need to be able to align resources to support the strategy. Uh, with less than 10% of success, okay, long-term uh, percentage of success is less than 10%. Innovation has to be CEO. You cannot have innovation as a bottom-up uh, process. Uh, to me, personally, the CEO playbook always. Okay, the risk is level. We do not talk enough about diversity in the organization. We should start talking about it if you want to embark on on uh, this journey and make a trip. Okay, when uh, when uh, Joe Biden uh, won this election in uh, the U.S. You will see every, everything solar, power, so green industry growing. We should talk about that. Eh? Make a trend is important. And uh, I think uh, my final note is because it's a very difficult subject, um, the use of innovation coach such as SAS can support you. With that, I uh, thank you for your time. Uh, we have limited time. We, might, we need a lot more time to talk about a lot of theory. Uh, with that, I hand the stage back to the moderator. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much, Derek. Uh, wonderful presentations. I like your analogy for the organizations as an elephant, and there's a Becky on top of it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, I have plenty of questions, actually. Uh, but before I would ask you the questions that I have, I also like to know from the audience, if you have any questions, please type your questions in the chat box and uh, put the word questions in bracket before you type your question. So I know that is a question. Okay, so please do that. Uh, put your question in the chat box and I will read the questions for you. 
Uh, okay, so while waiting for the audience to type their questions, uh, Derek, I'm, 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 I'm really curious, since your title is Elephants Cannot Climb Trees, right? And I've been listening and trying to find out, uh, can, can they actually climb trees? But you, you mentioned during your presentations that, please correct me if I'm wrong, that the innovation comes from Becky, not from the elephant itself. I mean, is that true? I mean, if that's true, then elephants still can't climb trees, right? So you have to create more Beckys. Uh, please correct me uh, if I'm wrong. And uh, could you explain more about that? Oh, I think we lost we lost Derek. Oh, probably he he pushed he pushed the leave button. Uh, Rian, can you help Derek to come back on stage, please? Ah, there you go. I <laughs> I thought I lost you. <laughs> I, I I can hear you. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I can hear you. I I think as um. Your question about uh, elephant climb trees. Elephant they do not want to climb trees. Right. Elephant want to eat the fruit on the right. trees. Okay. Okay. So uh, when you talk about climbing trees, he can shake the tree, right? Right. With the size of the elephant, he can stomp on. Uh, he can he can flood the dam and then uh, float. So, so but Becky uh, is an analo analogy when uh, when the innovation is starting to drift away from the core business. Mm -hmm. uh, you, okay. you, you cannot use, uh, you know, when you want to, when you need a tool that looks like this, never, no one ever seen before, and then you try to find three quotations. Mm -hmm. okay. You go through the process of the elephant, you have to find three quotations, uh, and you have to have a warranty. And then you get stuck. The process get stalled, right? So you have to have Becky on, on the back of of elephant. Right. So the elephant must create a lot of Beckys. Is that is that you're saying to to sort of like capture the opportunities where the elephants cannot? Uh, when the elephant starting with something that new to the team, it can grow that within the elephant. Okay. But if it's starting to go toward new to the world, new to the country, it's beyond the bandwidth of, of specialists in in elephant to, to support it. Right. So you have to, and if you have a Becky there and Becky die, no one need to worry just to be be harsh about it. Eh? Right. But elephant so, cannot fall. Uh -huh. right? So uh, when you show us the example of Speed Creed, uh, is that the elephant doing the innovation or is that Becky doing the innovation? Becky. Uh, the, it start off with a very small team um, outside of the mainstream. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, uh, it, it's a three years uh, journey. You get the first million dollars and then it's another two years to get another 40 million. Uh, mm -hmm. so the, the elephant itself do not have the patience mm. to keep reporting this to the board of director. Mm -hmm. There's no progress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, there's a question from the audience. It's come from Tika Sudarto. Question is, how do you tackle the success rate when it is less than 10%? How do you prepare for the failure that might happen? Oh, thank you. Um, the success rate of 10% is the average rate of success based on how we guys, you guys doing things today, meaning that you are you keeping the same process. Everyone want to keep the existing process. Uh, you want, you can increase, and in most cases, the company adopted innovation from the bottom up, okay, or the middle up. Uh, you can increase the success rate when the CEO take over the uh, I say this is mm. a book. How many times you see innovation journey coming from CEO that fail? Not many. But but because uh, CEO does also do not like to fail, they, they tend to pass this on to become a senior management level uh, to run innovation project. Mm -hmm. So the ownership is important. 
Okay, so you're saying that the the ten percent uh, success rate happens when the innovation scrum comes from the bottom. So it, when when it's come from the the lower hierarchy of the organizations, uh, lots of innovation, a lot of ideas, and they they didn't all end up successful. So only ten percent actually successful. But when we reverse the the pyramids, so the mm. innovation start from the top, and the top has all the resources they need they have all the power to to decide anything to execute anything then the likeliness of succeed become higher exactly that that was a one this is what i want to say exactly mm. right uh, what happened if um let's say they don't have board of directors such as yourself direct <laughs> so uh uh not all top level managements are innovators some of them are good executors Th that is why they are called ceo right chief executive officers because they are good in executing something not in searching or exploring uh, so what happened to a company where the top management are not really innovative in terms of having lots of ideas having the courage or the impulse to explore trying new things all they think about is delivering revenue to the shareholders. So what happened to those companies? I mean, that is do, fine, do, but... yeah. Do, do you that still is... recommend that the innovation should come from the top or? I think that the question should be, do you want it, right? And if the answer is yes, then uh, the next question is, uh, how would you do it? And uh, I will say, if you're gonna place an innovation code somewhere, you start at the top, okay? Not in the middle, because or you end up become uh, that kind of calling meetings eh, that no one support. Eh? Mm -hmm. So if you want, if the if the CEO need want to have innovation culture, uh, he should start at the top level and put put coaches there. Yeah. yeah. And once it start to trickle down, uh, then you can go to the plan B where you can start bottom up. Right. So this is a very important message to the audience, whose uh, some of the audience are coming from the top level executives, that uh, never expect that innovations can be greatly achieved when you, the top leaders, are not being part of it. I mean, even you should be the one initiating it, right? And and therefore the likeliness of the innovation program to be successful is higher rather than just you know hoping that uh, from the people in the bottom to actually uh, come up with innovation and, and executing it. So yeah, thank you. We, thank don't you. Want, we don't want to end up become an organization where we play games, right? Uh, you go and brainstorm for 10 ideas and then uh, you start to rank from the easy to difficult and then you ask people to pick and uh, you end up picking the easy one, okay? Right. It's, it's us who uh, invented the world uh, low hanging fruits, right? Yes. And when you pick a low hanging fruit, you are already make your decision not to do anything difficult, right? So right. let's right. let's be honest about it. Right? Yes. And and only the, the, the top level management has the authority to choose the highly the riskier path. Uh, and also exactly. they have the resources. Exactly, sir. Yes, yes. yes. The, yes. if you want to have uh, you know, I, I once sitting in a meeting where they were selecting uh, ideas yeah and uh tin, you know tinder right tin, uh, tinder program and someone came up with a tinder for truck tinder, mm. tinder for truck and that was knocked out five years ago because it sound crazy and it's, uh, it's too far away mm. and if that if today we have tinder for truck uh go check we have problem right uh okay <laughs> yeah yeah that's tinder okay yeah it's your job to select the right idea uh not okay. not your people your people will come up with great idea because you want to hear about them right yeah yeah that's why there's three group of people the the team have to come up with uh great ideas mm -hmm. the managers it, select the it. manager have to pick ideas mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. and uh the top management the top top management to provide resources yeah so Some in a way that's in a way that is also bottom up, uh, Derek. Yeah, yes, it, it's led by the top, right? Mm -hmm. Encourage the that the listening process, right? 
Uh, it's not, not in the middle. Okay. So uh, there is relevant to the question by Bari Pratama. Uh, he's, he's one of the audience. Uh, he also, uh, the question is also about innovation cannot be approached from the bottom up. <laughs> so it's the, the, the same thing that we are talking about. So that, that confuses some people because... You have to stay all few time and then you will be able to conclude that. Because always people, we always say bottom up, bottom up is possible. Right? But uh, I have failed many, many times. Right. So unless the top level management actually uh, not just support, but they champion the innovation, then the bottom up initiatives in your experience did not work. Is that is that, is that the conclusions? Great. The the radical one never come up. The the the, the, the tiny right. one like uh, how to get how to get on the bus safely uh, be selected. Okay. But uh, right. how to build a new bus that you don't need to hop on? Yes. Yes. Uh, never come up. Yes. That that really makes sense. Uh, because a lot of people when they talk about innovations, uh, most of them actually talking about incremental innovations. The yes. Kaizen, the continuous innovation, which is true. They need to start from the bottom, right? Because that's where the, the, the playing field for the incremental innovations. But when you talk about disruptive or radical innovations, then you, know, you, you must have top leaders there. The initiative, the strength, the sponsorship from there. So hopefully that answers your question, uh, Bari Pratama. Uh, okay. we, have, we have about four minutes uh, to go, Derek. I have, I have, I have another question. Uh, it's interesting when you say that uh, more and more uh, you say ready-made innovation can be bought. You, you mentioned about that uh, on your slide. And mm -hmm. more and more organizations, they are not developing innovation in-house, but they buy you know, ready-made innovations. Can you elaborate more about that, especially in terms of the post-COVID-19 world? I think it's already happened. Um, I mean, uh, you, you cannot say because of COVID-19, we will start to innovate. Right? And uh, I mean, for the last analysis, they have to catch up with what's going on. Okay? Mm -hmm. So in today's world, you don't need to develop AI uh, yourself. You can purchase uh, AI uh, solutions, then plug those into your organization. Mm -hmm. and. You spend half of your time preparing your team to understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. So it can. You still need to innovate, but uh, the work is cut out for you already. That uh, can shorten the process. Okay. So, uh, in terms of technological innovation, rather than developing it in house, we just buy them or even borrow them. But then you still need to sort of like modify that technology. And then you need to put your own value propositions, right? You can't, because every company can buy the same technology, but you are the one who understand the market. You, you are the one who understand the problems of the customers. And then you sort of like using that innovation as a template, and then you play around with it. You modify it. You add something completely different from your competitors, and that become your unique innovations that you offer to the market. Mm -hmm. um, Am I, and am I putting will, it right? Yeah, and, and that will be a copy next week, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I, I agree that there are good innovations, but uh, I myself, I'm looking, I always look out for something that never been done before. Uh, and uh, it's, just, it's just me. And uh, I just like to do something crazy. And, uh, and it takes me time. I, uh, half of my career is on doing all this stuff. Right? So yes, yes, you can purchase innovation and other people can do the same. Yeah. Uh, but if you look at uh, the case of Speed Street, uh, it's, we don't have any company still in Jakarta. Very, because it's very difficult. <laughs> right, right. Okay, so uh, the interesting thing is, is from your answer that there are plenty of ways we can do innovations. Uh, we don't have to build it in-house. We can always purchase it or um, borrow it. But again, we really need to think about how we how we deliver that specific technological innovations in the context of our customers. Uh, and in that part, hopefully, hopefully we are the first person or maybe the only companies that understand the, the, the customers. So sort of like we become the first mover in that sense. Okay, uh, one, one more minute, uh, Derek, and could you give um, 
some kind of advice for the corporate innovators who are attending this event uh, in terms of what they should do to prepare themselves for the post-COVID-19 world? Well, they have to be prepared for entirely new customers. Okay. Uh, what uh, new before COVID uh, and in terms of product will probably be the same. But their customer, your customer already, okay, uh, their behavior already, what's important to them before COVID and after COVID already changed. So I would say everyone, everyone has been looking at their customer base and see that deteriorating our values, your value of Excellent. Thank you very much, Derek. Uh, it's two o'clock exactly, so <laughs> our time is up. Uh, it's unfortunate. I, I really love talking and discussing this with you. I mean, this is so interesting. You uh, missed my theory, you. Uh, we need eight hours. Yeah, 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 yeah. I actually have some questions about the you theory as well, but again, we are running out of time. Maybe, hopefully, we can chat sometimes to talk more about the you theory. Yeah. Yes, and uh, thank you for all your time. <laughs> thank you for the listeners. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Yes. We, we do really enjoy it. So pleasure to have you here, uh, Derek, at this uh, Asia Corporate Innovation Summit. Thank you so much. And thank you, uh, everyone, corporate innovators across Asia who's already participating in the, in the event. We will take a five minutes break before we start the next session. So I'll thank see you, you in five minutes. Thank you.